I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church right here in Beaumont, Texas. And we're here on what's happening in our neighborhood. And today, my special guest is Councilman Audwin Sammy. Welcome, Audwin. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having hey, me. Hey, man, it's so good to see you. It's good to be seen. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, before we get into all, all the great details, how long have you been on the council? <laughs> wow, it's been over 30 years. I started uh, on council in 1984. 1984. Yes. What, what, what made you decide to run for the council? Well, uh, J.W. Albert. J.W. Albert. What you say? Uh, <laughs> J.W. Uh, back in 19, Mr. Albert, back in 1983, uh, he said, son, uh, to whom much is given, much is required. And God has been good to you. And you need to do your service uh, in serving the people. And so I ran for school board and I was successful and going on to the Beaumont Independent School Board. And uh, after I had been there, uh, I had an opportunity to serve with Tobe Duhon and Murray Frank. And after that year, they dissolved BISD yeah. and combined it with the South Park right, Independent right. School District. And at that point, I had to make a decision whether I would run for school board again or whether I would run for council because they had redesigned uh, the way our city council yeah. was set up. And so I decided to run for the uh, city council, and I was successful in 1984. Wow. So how have you seen the city of Beaumont change over these 30 years? I've seen tremendous growth. Uh, it's been uh, positive in many, many ways. Uh, I've watched uh, the politics change. I've watched the communities change. I've watched the people change, yeah. the leadership change. Uh, but in many ways, uh, some things have remained the same. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, now, just a few weeks ago, we all experienced Hurricane Harvey. And I mean, it, it, it brought some serious devastation to our city. Uh, uh, but you were out there on the front line uh, taking care of business. Every hurricane that's come through Beaumont, uh, I've been in the city, even when there was evacuations. I re I remained here, I, uh, I had my family to get out, but I remained here uh, to serve, and that's my job. And uh, so this was uh, different from any other hurricane that I've seen. Uh, there have been those that were scarier, much scarier, yeah. with the wind, and, um, but this one was one unlike all the others in that uh, it, came, it came ashore a little further south, and uh, came in at a Category 5, and then it went back out and kind of re regained some strength and, and moved up the coast a little bit, and it came back in right over Beaumont. This is not the first time we've had a hurricane come directly over Beaumont, but this one came over Beaumont, but it decided to stay a while. It just sat. I mean, it just sat right on top of us. It just sat and sat and sat, and it dropped rain and rain, and it rained. And um, considering uh, we did fairly well in dealing with uh, much of the rainfall, uh, but it was uh, a lot of people did not understand uh, the whole system of uh, the flow of the water from upstate uh, on down to the Gulf. And yeah. people were talking about how they opened the dams and they could have, uh, but there's not a lot of understanding. Uh, the dams, if they were not open, they could breach. Yeah. And it would have been devastating, even more and, so. And, and you want to control it. You want to control it. You want to control it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have to deal with uh, Steinhagen Dam, Dam B, uh, uh, Sam Rabin Dam. Uh, all of those up, upstate, they control the water that flows down to through the rivers, uh, into the canals, and out to the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. So. Um, uh, it was devastating uh, the amount of water that we received. Never in history had we received uh, as much water as we did with Harvey. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I, I received a call from you uh, because you actually were going knock on doors, especially down in the what we call the bottoms, in the bottom off, off of Pine Street. Uh, you actually were going to knock on doors to inform people, hey, listen, this is not the storm to play with. This water event is for real. Yes, because once before, that's not, I've, I've gone through the bottoms at least, uh, this makes about the third time that I've walked and knocked on doors telling people they needed to leave. Uh, uh, but this time it was not because 
of the anticipated storm surge that goes along with the, mm -hmm. the storm itself, but it was uh, the opening of the dams and the flooding that could be. So those were uh, some serious concerns, and I wanted to make sure that the people understood how serious it was. Yeah. And that's why uh, it wasn't just me. Bo Alfred yeah. and Zena Stevens, they got out. We, we all met, and we, we said, you know, I don't, we don't think the people truly understands how devastating this is going to be because the storm had kind of moved on. Right, right. But uh, we got together and we said we wanted to make sure the people understood how serious it was. So Zena got, got some of her deputies out. She got out knocking on doors herself. Bo, he got out there knocking on doors himself, and I was knocking on doors because we... We're all from North End. Yeah, we, you know, my wife and I, we, we even joined in. We were out in the Pine Club, and, and we were knocking on doors like, hey, man, this is for real. This is for real, yeah. The water will rise. It, 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 it will you rise, know? and it did rise. Yeah. And it, uh, it got to a level that I had never seen it before. Yeah. So it was a, a devastating storm. And even compared to other storms that we've been, uh, encountered, it was devastating. Now, uh, uh, another event that happened was we lost the water system. So, so, so tell us, you know, about why we lost this system. Okay, well, the uh, pump station that took in the water from the Natchez River, uh, uh, it, it went down, and that caused us to lose pressure in the lines, and we lost uh, that, that for a while. And that was a serious uh, issue, and before we could bring it back up, uh, we had to get to the pumps, and after getting to the pumps, getting the water out, getting them back running, it had to be okayed by TCEQ. Right, right. Uh, so those were uh, some things that um, we hadn't experienced before. And, you know, I, I believe there's a time and place for everything under the sun. Uh, so there's a time that we're going to address that. Uh, we've gone through several storms. We never had that problem. Right. We've had rising water. We've had some, uh, the river uh, coming never quite that high. But still, uh, there are some things we will discuss to uh, try to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Now, now was the age of the, uh, the pumps uh, uh, part of the factor that we lost? No. Okay. No. Because was, that, that, that has been rumored that because the pumps were old. Well, uh, you know, Carlton, that, that's one of the things. Uh, uh, I had never really got out on Facebook or public social media like I did this time. But it got to the point that I was hearing so much incorrect information being given. And rather than allowing people to become afraid, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, right. but he gives us that of a sound mind. Uh -huh. And he says we must uh, uh, allow the people to understand, present them with knowledge. And so that's what I decided to do. Uh, I decided I would try social media and wow. It, it, yeah. it works. Because, hey, hey, Arlen, I, I, listen, every day you were giving updates. Every day, night, <laughs> uh, sometimes in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. Because as, as I saw the water rising over on East Gill and Pine, uh, when I, I went out with a firefighter, uh, it was almost 11 o'clock one night, and I saw the car that had run off into the ditch, missing the canal by five yards, 10 yards, Wow! Uh, I just said, we, we cannot allow people to be blind. Um, I, I do have concerns. We can't, we, you can give information and sometimes information creates panic if it's not understood. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can understand why there's a hesitancy to put out too much information, but we, God gives us some wisdom he gives right, us right. discernment, and we have to do. Uh, there were times I stepped out uh, outside of what would be said was a proper thing for me to do, but um, it is what it is. But you know, you, you know, Aldwin, I didn't see uh, many other officials who were using this this platform because it's a platform that could be used to get information out. Well. Uh, there's, there's a flip side. There are things that go along with that. Uh, some of your peers, uh, sometimes uh, people misunderstand. It was stated that I was grandstanding, trying to... Uh, yeah. It yeah. wasn't political. It wasn't about 
politics. Uh, I love my people. Yeah. And uh, if I had not done those things that I did, uh, I would be less than an, an elected official, but I would not be a brother's keeper. Right, right, and right. And that's, that's why, you know, at, at some point I said, I don't care what other folks think. Uh, I, I go to these three things now. It is what it is. Yeah. I can't change anything that happened yesterday. It's going to be what it's going to be. But most importantly, people are going to believe what they're going to believe. That's it. That's it. So, hey, I'm good with that. And, and some people assume that you were doing it for political reasons, that one, that, that you wanted to run for mayor. Uh, so, so I, have, I have no desire to be the mayor. Uh, I can do uh, just as much or more uh, than I feel God has chosen me to do from the position of being on the city council. Uh, so as far as that, that's not what it was. It, it's not even about an election. Uh, after serving 30 years, you know, <laughs> if, uh, if, if it's time for me to go, the people will let me know. And, you know, I'll move on. But that's not, that's not what yeah, it is. Yeah, because I wanted to make sure that the, the viewing audience understood your stance on that because, you know, it, it had been, you know, people, people are people, and, and, and they would start saying things and that Auden's want to run for mayor. And, and today, and, and even before, you said, that's not my point. My point is just to inform my people, hey, this is what's going on. Well, Pastor, one of those things that I, I thank God that he's allowed me to understand uh, about battle. Battle is not against flesh and blood. That's right, that's right. But it's against principalities yeah. and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. So you, we have to be able to understand and know the enemy. And the enemy is that spirit of darkness, that spirit of, uh, of evil, that spirit of wickedness, that spirit of underlying backbiting, all of those. Those are works of the flesh. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm trying to focus on uh, the things of the spirit, looking toward the light. And, you know, I'm not going to trip with those. Yeah. So I, I just say uh, I, I pray that God would order my steps, and he did. So where does the city go from now, from here? Well, we're now, I mean, we went from preparation because uh, I was meeting w with the EOC uh, before the storm got here. We were watching the storm come. We watched it go in at Rockport. We watched it go back out. We watched it move down the coast. And then uh, we went to uh, preparation in, uh, in, in having uh, a safe haven, had to make decisions whether we would ask people yeah. to leave or right, whether right. we would allow them to hunker down and stay. And after that, then we went into the rescue mode. We had to go out and see and make sure those that stayed were okay, whether they had food, whether they had water. Uh, that was the third stage of that. And after the rescue, now we come to uh, restoration. We have to tear out those yeah. things that were damaged. We have to uh, rebuild. And after we finish, so that's the stage we're in now, uh, restoring, uh, rebuilding. And uh, after that, then we're going to review. Ah. We have to debrief. Look at what we did right and what we did wrong or what we might do differently. Now, one of the challenges, because we were a part of making sure that, you know, people had supplies, you know, mm -hmm. initially when they first started. Mm -hmm. You know, several of us got together and said, hey, let's, let's make sure that we have supplies all over the city at different churches. Mm -hmm. uh, but I found that it was difficult to, to get with leadership to get us the supplies to the churches who could make the, the impact to, on the community. Well... Uh, that's where I think it, when you, you can have knowledge, but knowledge without understanding means nothing. But knowledge with understanding and time and experience brings about some wisdom. So we've seen these things happen before. Yeah. I, I had problems with the way some things went, but I didn't make those calls. So I had to make a decision uh, to try to do some things on my own. Right. So the EOC, I, I commend our uh, emergency operations center and the commanders in, in that center. I commend uh, our police and fire. Yes. I commend all of our city employees from 
uh, street and drainage, That's water right. and That's, sewer, yeah. sanitation. They were working 24 hours a day, Parks and recreation. <laughs> uh, I was, and, you know, filling sandbags, getting out there to cut trees out of the street so people could pass. Uh, finance to make sure we had the money uh, to utilize contractors to do certain things. And I, I have to commend our city manager and his yeah. staff. Uh, they did a wonderful job. They worked. They did not stop. And the mayor. You know, I've heard a lot of things about uh, where was the mayor. Yeah. You know, uh, the mayor, doesn't, she doesn't get down like me. I mean, she don't put on her gym shorts and get out there and, and knock on doors. That's not, what, that's not what she's best with. She had a responsibility, and she did her responsibility whether people saw it or not. Right. But there's, you know, we have, different, we have different roles, and everybody has to play their role. Everybody has to play their part on this team. So um, I, I've heard all kind of things. Uh, but... You will know who truly loves what they do by when you see them. If you see them only in a time yeah. of a photo op or yeah. only yeah. at the time of some <laughs> crisis or only at election time, then that can cause you question. But if you see them constantly, constantly in the community, yeah. Yeah. that means something else. Yeah. So um, uh, everybody worked. Uh, the team was working. And I, I think uh, uh, it worked well. Uh, we still have some things we can work on. It, we can always get better. Um, but uh, uh, you always have naysayers. Yeah. So after the restoration comes the review, and then once you do the review, you look at all the good and the, and the things that were challenging, mm -hmm. and then you'll make some changes where necessary. I mean, that's, you know, that's just a part of the process. That's a part of the process. Just like I was an athlete all through school. You have to be prepared. You have to work out. You got to work, get your strength. Yeah. You got to understand yeah. your opposition. You got to understand your plays. You got to understand your game plan. Then when you go into the game, win or lose, after the game, you, you have to look at you have to look at the film and see yeah. how whether you got off script, yeah. whether you followed yeah. things as they were supposed to do, or whether you needed to change your attack or change. So now is the time that after we begin finish with some of the restoration. Then we will uh, look, we will review, we'll do some debriefing, yeah. and we'll see what we can do better. Now, uh, when you are in a time in your life where you have your son uh, uh, partnering with you, how, 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 how exciting is that for you? Man, it, it is truly a blessing. Uh, I, can't, uh, I can't express how important that is. Uh, and I'm not going to do that here because uh, I might get. Uh, yeah, I might little, have to get some tissue. Might you. have to get some <laughs> tissue because uh, you know he's a he's a good kid. I mean, well, not a kid. He's, yeah. He's a, a fine young man. He just turned uh, 36 yesterday. Um, uh, he's very articulate. He's bright, and he's humble. You know, uh, every day he he's been around me uh, now, and he's still yes sir, no sir, uh, yes ma'am, no ma'am. Uh, he's just an humble kid that uh, God has used him, and he has some great things in store for him. So uh, I'm, I, that's one of the greatest things I can experience in my life, now, being now, able to work with him. Now, he's followed you into the law practice. Yes. You know, I mean. Yes. He's now been practicing law about seven years. Uh, he's one of the uh, 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 court-appointed attorneys for the 252nd District Court. Uh, he, he's been very victorious in his trials. Uh, he's well respected all over the state. And, uh, hey, he's, he's going to, he's much better a lawyer than his dad. Uh, he's, he, he has a young mind. He has a young mind. Young mind. And, uh, I, I'm very pleased with, uh, what he's doing now. Uh, I'm ready to pass this on to him. And I can go out to pastor so, and do something so, else. So, so, so you're not talking about retiring or anything like that, are you? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. Uh, uh, I have uh, three grandkids now, uh, two uh, grandsons and one granddaughter. And my granddaughter has me wrapped around her finger. So uh, I'm really wanting to uh, enjoy that time with them. Uh, but uh, I'm just taking it one day at a time asking God to continue to order my steps in the way that he would have me to go. 
man. I'm good, man. I'm good. Yeah. So if somebody want to get in contact with you or your son, you know, uh, if they need some legal assistance, how can they do that? Uh, call Samuel and Son. We're at 2636 McFadden. Uh, over in Old Town, on the edge of Old Town. <laughs> you're not, That's you're another not. story. That's another hey, yeah, story. I, I know about that story, man, but we're yeah. going to do it right now. <laughs> we're not going we're not gonna to go there, but I'm at 2636 McFadden. And again, God has a way of placing you yeah. where he wants you to be. Uh, but we're right there. Our number is 409-833-4111. 833-4111. Um, it's Samuel and Son, and Lolita runs our office. And... Uh, now we have Laura Lafleur. She's uh, she's bilingual. Uh, we uh, hablo español. Uh, so <laughs> that's, all, that's about all I can say. <laughs> well, she's teaching me a little bit more, but it is truly uh, I, I've been blessed, man. I've been blessed from you know my days over at Mount Gilead. Yeah, yeah, man. We uh, go way back. Go way back, Pastor Whitaker. He led us, Rev. R. T. Anderson, yeah. before, and Reverend Carrington and. Yeah, uh, I've been blessed, and I'm with hey, Reverend Adolph, yeah, John yeah. Adolph. Hey, do you remember uh, uh, Reverend Goodo? Oh, yes, Reverend Goodo. Man, I mean, uh, 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 he, he can remember everything. Yeah, and I was a little boy in the back, on the back row yeah. over on Pine Street, <laughs> cutting up. But uh, that's another story for another day. But, yeah, I've uh, been truly blessed. Uh, mm. God has been good, and uh, uh, I, I'll continue to allow him to guide me. Uh, there's a lot going on in Beaumont. And um, one of the things I want to tell people, I, I'm on this kick now, stay woke. Yeah. Stay woke. First Peter uh, 5 and 8, I think, it says uh, we must uh, be vigilant. Yep. Be sober. Be sober. Be, be vigilant. Because your adversary is the devil. Like a, like a roaring lion. <laughs> looking see, to see whom he may survive. Right, that's right. So we have to stay woke. You know, right before this storm, I told people, everybody, they, they see the storm on the outside, but there's a storm going on on the inside, but you got to be yeah. aware. Yeah. And he sent us a messenger to prepare the way for us. Yeah. And those who have ears, let them hear. But there will be some that won't hear. Yeah. There will some <laughs> that will be blind because he says, stay woke, mm -hmm. stay alert. So I just say, um, now is the time. Um, we as a people, this is an opportunity for us to grow stronger. Right now, we, we experienced, last week we experienced uh, uh, people caring. About, didn't matter about what color you were. Yeah, yeah. It didn't matter about what religion economic, you were, economic. Yeah. <laughs> None of that mattered. It didn't. None of it. But as we move further away from this incident, yeah. Do we go back? Do we go back? Yeah. Because he does yeah. control the water. Yeah. yeah. He will let it rain. Mm -hmm. He will let it flood. But he will also part the water, and he will release the waters. Uh huh. So we better be stay woke. Yeah. Uh, so that's my thing because if we don't be a part of the planning, we're going to be a part of the plan. And right. there's so much going on across our nation. Uh, the storms kind of washed a lot of that to the side. But now that the waters have receded back into its uh -huh. banks, now we're going to begin to see some of these same things again. Are we going to wait until we have another storm to come together? Yeah. Or are we going to utilize what we've learned and move forward? in coming together as one because we are many members. But one body. But we're <laughs> one body. Yeah. And one body together, united, yeah. is a power that can't, can't be, be stopped. Right, yeah. Can't be stopped. Yep. Well, listen, if, if nobody else tell you thank you, man, for the work that you've done, I'm here to tell you thank you. That's my reasonable portion. <laughs> hey, listen, I want to thank Councilman Aldrich Samuel for being here today on what's happening in our neighborhood. Listen. Thank him for, for what he did during this, this past storm, but over the 30 years that he's been in service uh, for our citizenship here in Beaumont, for 30 years he's been on the council. That's, that's amazing. I, I didn't know he was on there for 30 years, but he's been there for 30 years. So I want to thank him for being there for us. Amen. So listen, thank you for joining us today, and uh, we will see you next time on our broadcast.